Welcome to Talent Takeover Unfiltered. When it comes to working hard and keeping it real, we know our shit. Self-care, happiness, inner peace, and time. I'm Brianna Rooney, and this is Taylor Bradley. Hey, y'all. And we have thrived in chaos and turned it into an art form. So, Taylor, what are we doing here today? We're here to give you a raw, under-the-hood view of all things recruiting and finally give credit where credit is due to a long, underrated industry that's full of, quote-unquote, experts. All right. Well, then let's take this show to the road. Hello, welcome to Talent Takeover Unfiltered. We're coming at you with another amazing guest, Melissa Grabener. Hello, welcome, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I am so excited to have you. Taylor, I was just about to welcome you. (laughs) I was trying to show my enthusiasm for our guest. Sorry. I'm happy to be here, though. Happy to be here. (laughs) The pleasure is mine, trust me. (laughs) So what I'm really excited about this Uh, episode in particular, which I feel like every episode we say this, but this is the power of networking. And Mm -hmm. we've been talking about networking, I mean, a lot all throughout the year, right? Because we've realized, wow, business is being done quite differently, especially Mm -hmm. in recruiting, especially if you're external, but even if you're internal looking for a job. And so Melissa, you do this really well. And this is, you know, I feel like your, your superpower, something that you were really jazzed to talk about. So, so walk me through just how, first of all, what, why talk about this? Why talk about this now? Yeah. I mean, I think you both know and and probably agree with me that the job market is extremely challenging right now. And I have job seekers all over the world reach out to me daily on LinkedIn telling me their stories of, oh, I've applied to 300 jobs and I've heard back from two and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And what I always suggest to job seekers is to network and then network some more. And the reason I say this is because most job postings, especially today, could have hundreds and hundreds of candidates, right? And so what- Thousands. (laughs) <laughs> thousands. I've seen job postings on LinkedIn, over 2,000 candidates, which is crazy. And what stands people apart from others is networking, right? So I'll give you an example. I worked at a company for 18 years. And when I left that company, I had no idea how I was going to even go about my job search. You know, being a recruiter, even though I have hired thousands of people throughout my career, when it's happening to you, it's kind of different, right? And so the totally. first thing I did was I reached out to my network. And in terms of someone's network, it's not just who you know, but the people that you know, know people. And they Mm -hmm. know people. And they know people. So networking isn't just about your inner circle of friends and perhaps former coworkers or relatives. All of these people that you know have a huge network as well. So I wrote down on a piece of paper, literally everyone I could think of that I can contact to potentially help me with the job. Well, I ended up getting another job from a gentleman that um, used to work for me years ago when I was at my prior company. And we stayed in touch throughout the years. And Mm -hmm. through me calling him and networking with him, he said to me, hey, we're actually looking for recruiters. Would you be interested? And long story short, within two weeks, I had a job offer. Mm -hmm. So I'm a good example of the power of networking. And what I explain to job seekers is networking isn't only about what can you give me? But it's what can I give you in return? Networking mm-hmm. is a reciprocal relationship it's, and it's a two-way street. So mm-hmm. when you reach out to people and you start to establish that relationship, find out if perhaps they can help you, but always ask them what you can do for them in return. Because it's not only like I'm going to take, but I want to give. It's a give and take sort of relationship. And networking, I believe, is without question the most effective way of finding a job. Mm-hmm. I completely agree with you. Um, Having just recently been down that path myself of like looking for a job and it's network. I mean, I was looking at roles that had 1,400 applicants, 1,500, 1,600, and it's it's insane how competitive it is. And I remember having this conversation with Brianna of like, I think the only way that people really get jobs right now in this current market is who do you know? Yeah. You know, it's just... And I, maybe it's always been that way and I just didn't know any better, you know, but, um, you know, I, this was my first situation and not having something lined up prior to exiting an organization. And so being out there in the job market and like you said, it's different when you're on the other side of it. Like we're recruiters, but when you're on the other side of it, it's kind of like, I don't know. I felt like 
an infant in all of it again. I was like, wait, I need to apply all these things that I talk about and teach and I need to apply it to myself. And it's just completely different when it's you. But I definitely started with my network. And even what I, what I feel like was great for me is even if they couldn't help me directly, it was really great to talk to people in my network and just see what are you hearing? What are you seeing? What, what hiring trends are you seeing within your organization? A lot of them were in, in large corporate companies. So what are you seeing there? How are applicants getting vetted when you're seeing, you know, 1400? It was, it was just more like pick your brain conversation. So I feel like, you know, it's not exactly like what you said, Melissa. It's not all about like, what can you do for me? It's, you know, I think it's two way street and also just maybe I don't need anything from you, but to pick your brain, you know? Exactly. And and the other thing I'll say about networking is that a lot of job opportunities are not even publicly advertised. It's true. A lot of companies, what they do is they fill positions through word of mouth or internal referrals. So networking allows you to potentially tap into these hidden job markets and gain access to opportunities that might not be widely known as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how can you, because I I think when you're networking, it can feel really heavy, especially Mm -hmm. if we're talking about, you know, job seekers, right? Um, It's it's very emotional roller coaster. Uh, But I just want to talk broadly. How do you initiate that conversation? Because like, let's just say, I mean, I think about you, you know, who was, you know, putting their, your head down for 18 years, you're probably not peeking it back up to, to network. So I, I guess there's two parts to this one. How do you constantly network and not make it mm-hmm. feel like it's so time consuming, but also how do you ask for something and how do you feel secure asking for something? Cause I don't think that's an easy thing. Yeah, I I certainly recognize that networking is not easy for everyone. And as a matter of fact, I have people all the time contact me on LinkedIn asking me, how do you even network in the first place? Or I tend to be a little bit shy. It's really out of my comfort zone. And I look at networking as like gaining friendships, right? So like Mm -hmm. these people, maybe they can turn into friends and look at it as as a way to kind of just expand your, your kind of your circle of people. Um, The other thing I would say is that I think it's perfectly fine, in my opinion, to ask people if they have anyone they can recommend. Um, Mm. And I realize this is not easy for everybody, but we always have to be our own best advocate. And I'm always under the mindset that if you don't ask, you can't receive. Mm -hmm. And the other person that you're speaking with can't read your mind. But if you very, you know, you obviously, you know, you have a conversation and you ask about the other person and how they're doing. And I don't think it's a matter of getting on the phone and within 30 seconds asking them for a job or if they know anyone, but it's Mm -hmm. building that rapport, establishing that relationship, finding out what you can do for them, and then saying within the conversation, I want you to know I was recently displaced from XYZ company and I'm looking for my new opportunity would it be okay if I sent you my resume or do you know of any jobs or anyone in your network who might be able to help me? And then of of course you want to express sincere gratitude. And then of course, also saying, I really appreciate the conversation. Is there anything that I could do for you as well? Mm -hmm. So what's your preferred method of networking or like part two, what's your approach? Do you start with LinkedIn and then maybe that evolves into a phone call and then a coffee? Like what's your preferred approach to networking? Yeah. So for people that I know personally, I always like face-to-face interaction. So Mm -hmm. I would ask them, hey, do you want to meet for coffee? Do you want to go out for lunch? For people that I don't know that I've networked with on LinkedIn, it's all through the LinkedIn platform. And I think it's a perfectly acceptable way to do that because a lot of these people that I've networked with or job seekers network with, there's they might live in a, a different city or there's no way you can have that face-to-face interaction. So establishing that communication, those lines of communications via um, LinkedIn, I think is perfectly acceptable. Um, the other thing that I've done too, is that if I have someone's email address, I will email them separately as well. Um, not everyone is active on LinkedIn. Not everyone is on the platform Mm -hmm. even at all. They might have an account, but they're never really on it. So if I have the ability to find out their email and I'm able to obtain that, I have in my past definitely have sent people personalized emails um, explaining kind of the purpose of my reaching out and it, making it very warm, very personable, mm-hmm. but asking if perhaps they have time for a phone call um, or just mm-hmm. maybe, you know, just to talk about what what I'm looking for. So what do you suggest? Because like there's a lot of rejection, right? When when you're networking. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I know like Taylor and I talked about this probably like about a year ago at this point, which mm-hmm. time flies. Uh, when like, you know, we were doing like just business development and there was a lot of people that like, look, they've called me for favors. I've talked, you know, I've, I've, 
done X, Y, Z for them, or I've worked for them before. And then it's like crickets, right? And so Mm -hmm. you kind of like internalize me like, what did I do wrong? Do they not like me anymore? Do they not like, like, do they not, did they not like, like my services? Like you start thinking of all these things. So when you're networking, how many times do you recommend you follow up and how do you not, you know, feel small? So I think in terms of follow-up, my general rule of thumb is it's okay to follow up one time, but after the second time, if they don't get back to you, I take that as a sign that either they're not interested in speaking with me or perhaps they can't help. I I typically Mm -hmm. will not reach out to someone more than twice. Um, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. And I feel like if they wanted to talk to me, they they would have responded. And the other Mm -hmm. thing that I suggest, and I say this to job seekers all the time, even when looking for a job don't take it personally. So if you reach out to someone and they don't get back to you, it, these people, a lot of these people that you reach out to, they don't even know who you are. They don't know your background. Mm-hmm. So try to have a thick skin. Try not to take it personally. If we all took things like this personally, it would be detrimental and it would be horrible. Mm-hmm. But it happens to all of us. I've reached out to people on LinkedIn to network that I never heard back from to this day. I don't take it personally because there could be a variety of reasons why they didn't get back to me. And I feel, and I say this to job seekers, is we all have so much to offer. And if someone doesn't want to have that relationship with me, then I'm not going to go ahead and chase it. There's enough other people out there that I can network with and build relationships Mm -hmm. with. But just in general with job hunting, there's so many reasons why someone doesn't get a call. There's so many reasons why someone doesn't get um, maybe a job offer. But And a lot of those reasons have nothing to do with you. I actually posted about this on LinkedIn about a week ago where rejection is part of the process, right? Mm -hmm. All of us, when looking for a job or when networking, we all get rejected. It's part Mm -hmm. of the process. But rejection, in my opinion, is it's redirection. It's redirection Mm -hmm. into something that was more meant to be. So true. true. With like anything, with relationships, with jobs, I feel like that's that's been so true in my life. It's redirecting to what what's supposed to be for your life, what your mm-hmm. path is supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and I love what you said too about, you know, in your initial outreach, especially if it's somebody that you don't know and you're trying to network with that you don't ask them for anything. Because I was thinking about as you're talking, I'm thinking about different scenarios, different messages that I get. And I think oftentimes, like you said, there's a million reasons why people don't respond or don't get back to somebody. And and one of the reasons could be is that like, I can't help you. I There's nothing I can do for you. I'm not hiring. There's nothing I can do. And if you're outright just asking me, hey, do you know anybody hiring or are you hiring versus I'd really love to talk to you. You know, I see you have a ton of experience in TA. I'd really love to talk to you about your approach to networking or your approach to, um, you know, trying to make yourself, your application stand out amongst job seekers. More like pick your brain type stuff. Yeah. Then I'd be more than happy to have a conversation. But I think that that, and I had never really thought about it till now is that oftentimes when you know, you can't help somebody, if they're asking you something for something outright, then you may just not respond versus if it's more, I'm seeking information, you know, just want to pick your brain. And then you feel like you're, you're adding value to them. You know, you're helping them in a way that the only way that you can at that moment. You know, I agree. And I have job seekers reach out to me multiple times daily. And there Mm -hmm. are always those job seekers that say, hi, my name is Taylor and I'm looking for a job. Can you help me? These people don't tell me what they're looking for. They don't Mm -hmm. tell me about their background. And basically what they're saying indirectly is I need you to go into my LinkedIn profile and research me. And then you come back and tell me if you can help me. I never advise on that method ever. I have other Mm -hmm. people reach out to me and say, hi, my name is Taylor. Um, I was recently let go. I have X amount of years of experience from X company and maybe a couple bullet points of some of the highlights of their career. Those are the people that I respond to because they're taking Mm -hmm. the time to write a personalized message and they're not making me dig into their profile to figure out who these people are. It's almost like, help me help you. You Reach out to me. I can't guess who you are, what you want and what you've done but help me understand who you are and what you're looking for. Make it easy for me to want to reach back out to you. Right. And if you can't invest more time in your outreach to me, why would I invest time in you? A hundred percent. Yeah. Just, just yesterday I got this, I mean, I'm talking like it was quite a paragraph on LinkedIn. Right. So initially I was like, oh my God, (laughs) like, so that was like almost too much. However, when I started to reading right off the bat, it was such a personal story that she shared with me that naturally, like my my emotions in me was like, oh, I, I have to keep reading. Like I have to see, like, can I help this person? You know, because it's like again, the vulnerability, the the amount of time that they put into it, like the least I can do is read it, right? right. You know, and that's how I feel. So 
So, so Melissa, when it comes to to networking, and let's let's keep job, job seekers out of it right now because I feel like that's kind of like okay, we got to get to work, got to get networking. How do you network when you don't need to? Like, what's mm-hmm. best practice there? Yeah, so I think LinkedIn's a terrific platform for this. Um, I'm constantly adding connections that are value add to me, and so. Mm-hmm. When I look to connect with people, I typically would like them to be either in the recruiting or HR space because that's what I do. Or I, I, my clients right now are in the biotechnology um, pharmaceutical space, and actually mm-hmm. that's my predominantly my whole career. So I like networking with people that are in that space um, that I feel there could be some sort of like mutually beneficial longer term relationship. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to reach out to a data scientist who lives in Germany, for example. So there's not a lot of commonality there. So I'm very methodical and thoughtful when I come to think about who are the people that I want to reach out to. I mm-hmm. want it to be that we could build this really meaningful relationship over time. And we have that common bond of, oh, I've worked in pharmaceuticals as well, or I've worked in startup organizations, or yeah, I'm a recruiter too, or I've worked in HR. Having that commonality, are those are the people that I like to build relationships with. Um, and conversely, these are the people that I can help as well. Versus, Mm -hmm. you know, someone who is in a completely different function, level, location, having a common bond to me is really the way to go. So for those that you don't have a common bond with that send you connection requests, do you connect with them? Not always, to be honest. And and that's that's because I want to be thoughtful of who my connections are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel bad turning people away. I, I do. I'll admit it. I mean, I feel like they're connecting with me because they see that I'm a recruiter or they see the things that I post and they think that perhaps I can help them because of my profession. Um, but I feel like it, and you almost have to draw the line somewhere in terms of who you agree to kind of um, have a connection. There has to be that commonality. And I typically look at, at their profile. And I also look at people who write a personalized message to me. Mm-hmm. Um, LinkedIn mm-hmm. has the capability of writing, a, as you all know, right, mm-hmm. of writing a personal message to someone you connect with. And the people that take the time to write a message to me, and it's clear they've looked at my profile, and I feel that there could be some sort of beneficial relationship, those are the people who I will accept a request from. It's the other people that are just blindly trying to connect with as many people as they can. Typically, I don't connect with those people. Okay. That's good insight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, lately, I've been um, kind of annoyed. So here's the thing. Like, like I do business development. I do a lot of heavy re- outreach. I do sourcing. You know, it's like I, I do have cold messages, tons of them, right? So I appreciate cold messages and I don't, it, I don't blame anyone for it. However, what you were talking about to me um, relates to doing your homework. Exactly. You know, so like I had this person who will not stop contacting me. So now I'm actually just going to remove them as a connection at this point because I'm like, this is ridiculous. If you want to, you can pay mm-hmm. for the message at this point. Um, but they're like um, at trying to um, work as a recruiter for me. So, but but not in my organization. They're trying to fill roles with one I haven't posted and I'm also a recruiting company. So both of those things don't line up. Like you're literally just spamming me to spam me or to hit your numbers internally. I don't know what it is, right? But it start it starts to get like, you know, kind of disrespectful to the craft, you know, almost. So I feel the same way with networking. It's like, look, again, I'm here for that, but don't be disrespectful to me because that's exactly what you're doing is you literally didn't even glance at my profile or what I do or why I exist for that matter. Mm -hmm. The other thing that happens to me a lot is people reaching out to me saying, can you please uh, look on your careers page and see if you have any jobs for me? That is my biggest pet peeve because first of all, it is not my job to look for your job. Second of all, if you go on my profile, you can see the company I work at and the proactive approach is go on the website, find a position of interest. If you find that, then send me a message and say, I looked on your website. I'm interested in this role. Can I send you my resume? That's a completely different story and scenario than people that, and this happens all the time. Hi, Melissa. Wow. I came across your profile. Um, I'm really desperate need of a job. Um, can you please tell me what openings there are at your company? I delete those people. I'm just going to be Ooh. frank. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that you said that because it's, um, I was going to ask, you know, when, when part two of that, I was going to ask, so people that do actually go and they say, Hey, Melissa, I found this job. I feel I'd be a good fit because of X, Y, Z, can I send you my resume? Do you get back to those? Even if it's not a job that you're working. So that was going to be, but you answered my question that you do value that and you get, if you do your homework, I'll intro you to the recruiter that's working 100% on the hundred percent agree. Okay. And if someone takes the time to actually apply and someone takes the time to proactively go on 
my company's website, I feel that the right thing to do is to make sure that I send that resume to whoever the hiring manager is, who I have access to that information. Mm -hmm. Um, And then what I say to the hiring manager is I, this person reached out to me on LinkedIn. I can't vouch for them in terms of who they are or their prior or current work performance, but they, you know, write, wrote me a nice letter on LinkedIn and please let me know your thoughts on their candidacy for your position. And I always get back to those people that take the time to that. reach out to me. Um, I always make sure that I close the loop with them for sure. I love that. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, a takeaway I have from just this conversation is that obviously networking, we all know it's important, but thoughtful networking is really, really important. Like being more strategic about who you accept as connections versus who you follow or who you, you know, don't accept and then just have them follow you, how you reach out to people that you don't know. Like there's an approach and strategy to all of it. Networking, like someone who just sent you that message and is like, Hey, can you help me find a job and tells you nothing about them? Like that's not networking for our listeners. That's not networking. Right. So yeah, this Mm -hmm. has really been helpful. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. How would, how would you do this in person? Because I'm thinking of like, again, like the anxiety that comes from networking is strong. But I think in person, like, honestly, like going to certain events is like kind of my night, my worst nightmare. Like, I'm like, look, I love listening to speakers. I love all of that. But like going in a room and just seeing all these people just standing there awkwardly and like, what do I just pick someone like who's the best outfit, you know, but like, how do you recommend kind of showing up and getting ready for an, an event? So I'm one of those rare people who actually likes going to networking events. I, I feel like I'm kind of in my element and I've gone to many of those events in the past, like when I was looking for a job and I always had the mindset of, you know, if, if you don't put yourself out there, you're not going to get anything back in return. And, you know, I, I've always been not in a, a boastful way, but um, I've been proud of what I've done. So I've, I've been proud of my achievements and had the confidence to go up to people and say, you know, I'm looking for a role. I mean, first I'll start a conversation and establish a rapport and try to get to know them a little bit. Um, and then depending on the situation, I'll either say, can I send, you know, give you a copy of my resume here, or would you prefer I follow up with you with an email and I'll attach my resume to the email. Um, I think networking events are really great opportunities to, to meet people. I'll give you a quick example. Um, about four years ago, I was asked to speak at the HERMAC event, which in Chicago is the HR Management Association of Chicago. So I was on the panel there. And an hour before the panel started, there was a, a networking event. And I had the most um, wonderful conversations with with a small group of people because an hour isn't a huge amount of time. But there are about four people I spoke with that to this day I still speak with. I'm still mm-hmm. connected to them because we established that face-to-face contact and built that rapport, even though it was within a small amount of time. Um, and looking back, I'm so grateful that I went to that event. And I mean, the speaking part was a lot of fun, but it was meeting people, getting my name out there and getting myself in front of people. But I do realize that this is not something that everyone is comfortable with. Mm-hmm. I'm an extrovert, so I'm like in my element, but a lot of people shy away from that. But I think it's just important to put yourself out there, have confidence in what you've done. And everyone has a story and everyone has strengths and all of us, there's so many good things about each and every one of us. It's capitalizing on that and and being confident in your abilities that you want to establish those relationships and get your resume into different people's hands. What would be like an opener? Like, like here's here, here I am and it's like, okay, coming in hot, right? Besides like, hey, I'm Melissa. You know, is it just like, what's that line? It's almost like dating. Yeah, it is. It is somewhat like speed dating. And so the way I, I've i always approached it is, hi, you know, just like you said, I'm Alyssa. Um, I actually just worked at Takeda Pharmaceuticals for 18 years. I'd love to learn a little bit more about you. Um, where are you currently working? What is your job? Um, and then kind of see how the conversation kind of flows from there. But I've always taken the chance within that conversation to let these people know that, hey, I've, you know, I'm looking for a new opportunity, would love to share my resume with you and would be so grateful if there's anything you can do to help me, or maybe, you know, some people in your network. And then of course, I always say to them, what can I do for you as well? Because again, that networking is always a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Okay, guys, we're coming up on time. I know it flew by. It's always quick. Uh, It is always. (laughs) But Melissa, go ahead and hit our listeners with your broke to boss tip. I think that, and I post about this a lot lot on LinkedIn, is that I know job seeking is hard. I've been there before more than once, and I have complete empathy for people. 
that are in this position, but we only need that one yes, right? We don't need 10 job offers. We need that one great job offer. And if you get rejected, don't take it personally. It, uh, the vast majority of the time, it has nothing to do with you. There's a variety of reasons why that could have happened. Just network is, I know we've been talking about networking, but it's so important. Network is with as many people as possible. Put yourself out there, have confidence in yourself and have confidence of what you can contribute to your next organization. Take care of your health, take care of your mental health, take care of your physical health, spend time with your loved ones, do what makes your soul and heart happy. Um, breaks are good. You know, looking for a job can or is a full time job, but make sure you're not turning it into a 60 hour a week job. Take the time to take care of you and always remember it's not a matter of when it will happen. I'm sorry, it's not a matter of if it will happen, it's a matter of when it will happen, mm -hmm. but just keep going. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was that 10 was broke to bust it. I was like, go, good. go, go. Good. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Thank you so much. And, you know, it even turned into helping, you know, people that are looking for jobs, you know, and, and just yeah. network, networking in general um, is powerful, whether or not, again, you're just, you're happily employed because you never know what kind of conversation happens. And then also if you're doing business development, I mean, all of that, you know, people want to work with who they like and who yeah, they right. relate to and, you know, stuff like that. I love that. Exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you both. This was a lot of fun. Um, really appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Thank you absolutely. for joining us. Okay. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Okay. Remember all, if you loved this, please share this amongst the group. You know, this is definitely more dedicated for talent acquisition and recruiting, but this, you know, particular one, I mean, you could use this all over the place, right? Any, mm -hmm. any industry. Love it. Yeah. So we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you. Thanks y'all.